We're the last of the cowboys to get the F gone, boys. Eighteen wheels on the concrete, it's a slow and dying breed. Rolling like Jesse James, a modern day outlaw game. If you're out here riding with me, come on back and make some noise. We're the last of the cowboys. So it's the the week of the 2018 uh, Super Rigs uh, show. Of course, that's the Shell Rotella Super Rigs truck show. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, uh, tell us who you are and what you're running there. All right, my name is Brandon Smith. We're out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, got a 1996 379 extended hood Peterbilt uh, with a uh, 550 cat, 13 speed, 355 rears. Uh, we're dragging a uh, 2018 smooth side, 34 foot frame type triaxle. Uh, just picked the trailer up new probably uh, back at the end of January. I tell you what, it's a, it's a really smooth looking truck. And I say smooth, clean. I look at it and it's got that raked look like it's, uh, like it's a hot rod. And lo and behold, when I got in there earlier today to get a good look at the interior, you got a, you got a placard there that says hot rod. So uh, you don't have to tell us a story about that. Well, the, the blue and white paint scheme, it came from a, uh, a 78 model Freightliner cab over originally I had um, that I bought off a friend of mine back years ago. And uh, I'd had a couple of trucks before that. I started trucking in 99. Uh, my brother just turned 40 years old. And uh, when I decided to do the truck, I was actually trucking the cab over, pulling the dump wagon. And, it just really wasn't practical no more. I mean, we had done a few shows with it. It was a pretty popular truck out there on the internet and everything. And so what we decided to do is uh, end up selling it, get something a little bit more practical for getting in and out of on a daily basis, uh, short run, multiple rounds. And a um, uh, good friend, Bill Warner there, he, he hooked me up with uh, a fellow there. Ended up buying this truck. And, it started out as an old log truck. It was it was in pretty bad pretty bad shape, and uh, we went ahead. I wanted to put the colors of the cap over on it. We did that. It's just been added to it ever since. And I broke the frame on the truck and re-railed it, made it longer, uh, dropped the front end down, gave it the low clean look. Uh, you know, hot rod it up a little bit. Like I said, we redid it again like four years ago, changed up the paint scheme, but I was going to stay with the blue and white, and that's what people pretty much know me for when they see the colors. 10 well, you're looking pretty good there. You said you broke the frame. Tell us what you do with the truck to where you, you broke it that way. Well, we end up, we do a local haul. We haul uh, recycled plate glass to a, a manufacturer that manufactures all the highway beads for the reflective properties in the highway paint, uh, paint fillers, toppings that go on it. So when your headlights hit the lines at night, they kind of glow, give it that glow. You know, we're always maxed out, you know, pretty much heavy loads. And truck being from up north, being West Virginia, Virginia. Had a few thin spots in the frame. and. Day after day, load after load, she finally uh, let go on me. And so then that was when we made the decision. We're going thicker and going longer. Roger that. I hear you. You said something about uh, hauling stuff that makes uh, the, the paint lines on the road glow. So speaking of glow, let's talk about some lights. Why don't you go ahead and throw them lights on. Let's see what you're looking like there. Pretty nice. So, uh, what do you got for a light count, and uh, whose lights do you use? Well, we just kind of went with the latest style. You know, the 
wagon, she's wrapped up in lights, stopped at the bottom, side to side. The uh, truck, we kind of stayed with the clean look. Uh, I think there's uh, around 80 some lights on the wagon and uh, just a few on the truck and the places that really count, just to keep it clean and, uh, you know, just kind of give it that appeal, that, that clean hot rod look. ask you some stuff about uh, the Shell Rotella show. So when you go to that show, what do you expect to see? You know, the show has been held all over the country and whatnot for many, many years, I think 36 years. Uh, what do you expect to see when you go to that show? Most of the time, the Shell Rotella show brings out the best of the best uh, out here in the show truck world. The Shell does a real good job. at free event for all truckers to join. It's the only show out there that actually pays out a little bit of prize money and other gifts and all and but usually when we come to these shows you know you see the guys that really make a difference in the industry and pretty much the best of the best when it comes to the show trucks i mean it always brings a good crowd and uh this was our third time doing it probably in the past eight nine years and uh we came out on top this time pretty good and uh in the tractor trailer division and makes a guy like myself you know just an everyday kind of small town guy you know get out here and run with the guys in the big leagues. Well, one question I'll throw out to you. It has to do with uh, the, the downtown party in uh, Lexington, Virginia. So what was your thoughts on that? It was a real good time. You know, they blocked off the streets downtown. They, they bring the trucks into downtown. Uh, Shell put on a couple of concerts. And there was a lot of wow factor from a lot of people who pretty much didn't know that if there was anything out here like this. And they always, you know, think the stereotypical scenario. And we got a lot of... A lot of looks, a lot of compliments last night um, for people who had no idea of pretty much about the trucking industry. You know, this right here is definitely one of the perks and the fun times and the cool rides and, you know, all that kind of thing. And you're just not the, you know, just basic truck driver out here. There, There is a, you know, different paths to follow in the industry. Regarding the, the term super rigs, in your opinion, what makes your truck a super rig? In my opinion, I mean, it's a truck, you know, we get out here and we work um, every day, you know, take the extra time to, you know, keep it nice and, uh, you know, to keep one, you know, to the level that, you know, the best you can while you're out here trying to work and that pretty much, to me, that's what sums up a super rig. Yeah, and that, uh, a lot of guys uh, share the same sentiment, uh, you know, the truck really means something to them blood, sweat, tears have gone into the, the build process of making the truck what it is. Uh, many things, many things. And all in all, a lot of guys there, they're just more than proud of prize money or award or not. It's just something that's that's more than fantastic to them. It lets people know that there is still some, you know, some good out there in this world with everything going on. And, uh, you know, there's still guys out here trying to make a difference. Absolutely. 
And that's the great thing about, you know, Shell doing what they do to, to dig out these stories. They had a couple different awards today that, that uh, designated uh, uh, those same sentiments. They wanted to recognize people that have gone above and beyond. Uh, you know, outside of trucking and whatnot. So it's great to be able to do that. You know, I enjoy doing the same thing. I agree 100%. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, like you said, it's more than just a truck and it's more than just being a driver. I mean, it's a it's a lifestyle. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of us out here that, you know, still look at it like that. You know, you got a lot of people out here this day and time with things the way they are. You know, it is just a job. And uh, coming to these shows and having the kids, you know, look at the trucks and everybody enjoy what you're doing and give you the compliments and stuff. It, you know, it makes you understand. You are appreciated out here. So we're getting a good look at your trailer. Uh, tell me more about the trailer, you know, some of the functions. It may be a basic trailer, you know, to some or maybe even to me or maybe not but if there's anything that that's that really sticks out about it you know as far as operation it, it sure looks pretty but as far as operation you know tell me about that like i said it's a you know i, I custom spec the trailer to, you know for what works for me and um the trailer's got a lot of neat little features uh you know everything you can do from inside the cab you know when you get ready to unload a load whether it's uh you know, drop the airbags, open the tailgate, lift the axles, put the axles down, um, you know, everything like that. Everything's got electric over air controls. And, you know, just a lot of little neat little touches. Uh, you know, we don't run any uh, pogo sticks on our trucks to hold the air lines and everything. So I kind of came up with that deal on the front to keep my hoses and uh, everything nice and neat. And, uh, you know, the trailer's got swing away bows. You, you pull the rope in the back you see on the tailgate and they swing out of the way for convenience and uh, we ordered the trailer with all you know polished job polished frame pretty much about everything you can get is the Cadillac and one of the neatest features of the trailer that I enjoy the most is when you're riding down the road empty you're only riding on the center axle shortens up your turning radius evens out your tire and brake wear you don't see that a whole lot yeah you see the front axle picked up but Guys always kind of look at you a little funny when they see that back one in the air, but you know, you can pretty much swing it around like a wheelbarrow and do what you need to do. That's pretty cool for sure. I'm going to hang back toward you so we can hear you run through the gears.
So, Brandon, we never did uh, talk about how you got into trucking. So, uh, explain how uh, how you got into trucking and how long you've been trucking for. Lay a little bit of history on us. Yeah, I'm a little bit opposite than everybody else. Uh, I'm the first one, actually, in my family that has ever done any trucking. Uh, grew up out in the country a little bit, uh, around the farm and stuff. But uh, I had a friend of mine in high school that... Uh, owned some trucks and just kind of messed around with it, got interested in it like that. So I started driving when I was uh, right at 20 years old. About a year later or so, back in 99, uh, I had a chance to, uh, to purchase a truck from a neighbor of mine, a job pulled in the dump bucket. You know, just kind of, you know, doing my thing and been doing it here ever since. Been doing it since 99. And, you know, a lot of people always, you know, their dad did it or their granddad did it. Well, you know, I didn't have none of that. So I'm pretty much a start right here. At, you know, trying to carry it on, and uh, I got two daughters and a son, and I'm gonna try to get them to do something else, but, you know, you can't ever tell. I mean, this, uh, you know, my little boy, he loves trucks to death, and I'm pretty much a first-generation trucker when it comes to this, and trying to hold up my end of the deal, make a living at it. said you learn the ropes so as far as learning the ropes you know I always like to uh, when the opportunity arises ask a guy like yourself that has experience to share some of that knowledge share some of the experience of someone wanted to get straight into trucking and run a you know run a dump bucket or a dump trailer of course uh, you know share some tips uh, share some precautionary measures you know so uh, you know what can you tell us well, you know, like I said, I don't, you know, discourage it or encourage it either one. It's kind of one of them things that you, you like it or you don't. Uh, we run running dump buckets. There's a little bit to know. I mean, that's what we started out doing. Uh, my friend's family, they actually had us pretty much what we did. Uh, hauling sand and gravel and, you know, things of that sort. There's a few things you know you need to know. I mean, you load a trailer one-sided. It don't take much to flip over when you're unloading a load. Make sure you're on level ground. You know, it becomes kind of like second nature, you know, to do your job and do it right. How would you recommend a guy get the experience needed? Well, a lot of the guys, you know, they, they start out, you know, a lot of them start out driving dump trucks, and this pretty much, you know, works, you know, the same way. The good thing about this versus the other freight, you know, you don't need nobody's help to unload it. You don't need a lumper or a forklift or, you know, anything like that. Uh, most of the places we load at, you either load out of a chute or by, with a front end loader, but it only just takes a matter of minutes. And uh, when you get to your destination, it comes time to get the load off as long as you can get to where the man wants it. Uh, all you got to do is put it in the air. There ain't no waiting on a dock or lumber service or anything like that. And uh, it's a bit easier, a little different. It's got its ups and downs just like everything else. But, you know, the advice I can give anybody that wants to get into it is get with a company that specializes in, you know, bulk freight. Kind of get in there and learn what you're doing. And if you're used to bumping docks and swinging doors, you know, you might unlock the gate, put it in the air, put it on the ground. Now, uh, no pun intended, you said that there's ups and downs uh, with, with the business of uh, dump trailers. Uh, so what are some of the downs? And of course, uh, what are some of the ups? I would say the biggest ups is the wait times and the, uh, and the unloading the situations mainly. Uh, a lot of times your dump freight are going to be short trips. You know, it's bulk commodities needed. There's long hauls too, but most of it's going to be load after load, round after round. And, uh, I would say the downs to it is some of the commodities that you end up hauling. Um, a lot of people would be surprised what gets put in these things. Uh, you know, we don't deal with it much. Like I said, we haul a lot of recycled glass, and that's pretty much what we deal with. You see one of these things going up the road, it can have anything from uh, cow manure, chicken guts, uh, feed products for cattle and uh, grain. You know, it's just a wide range of things that, you know, go in these trailers. And sometimes a loader man, you know, he, he may power your load up when he loads it. You can't get your tarp over it. The only one way to do it is just get up there and kick the load down or whatever. You know, sometimes it can get nasty. I mean, it just depends. Uh, you know, a lot of stuff's clean, but I would say there's just as much dirty as it is clean. Thanks for explaining that because, again, someone's going to want to go, uh, you know, 
Uh, maybe he didn't think about some of the things that are less than, than desirable. It's kind of funny, you know, the guy that gets out of the freight hauler truck or gets out of the reefer, you know, he, he can go back there just open the doors and it's pretty much a simple deal, but, you know, everything you haul is not gravy and it ain't for uh, flip-flops and sweatpants. <laughs> That's funny right there. I'm sure you've used that line a time or two. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, you see, a lot of guys just pretty much kind of leisure around, but, you know, some of this stuff right here, you, you never know what you're going to get into. Uh, you, you know, you may have to get in there where you can get your cover rolled over, it, or you go to dump a load, and some of the load ends up sticking, and i um, got to do some shoveling. Uh, you know, I mean, you, you know, you can get into all kinds of different situations, and, and it's just not your average, it's just a break hauling job. Roger that. All right, let's go ahead and kick it up a little bit. As we cruise back in here to, to White's uh, truck stop here, uh, Travel Center in Rayfeen, Virginia, uh, I want to say uh, the truck is beautiful. Uh, we've had uh, we've been able to enjoy some awesome scenery, and I appreciate you, you know, burning some fuel so we can get a good look at the truck out there on the highway. That's no problem, Chris. I mean, we enjoyed you know getting out here. Like I said, man, anything to help the industry out, just, you know, get it out there to people. You do a great job with what you do, and, um, you know, I'm glad and honored to be a part of it, to be honest. Ten four, man. We'll appreciate you, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you soon. Ten four.